Okay, I, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about classes and strongly and weekly, weekly type languages and give you some of the philosophy for why we need an enum. So um, some of you, before you took CSA uh, and before you took data structures, you took a language called App Inventor with computer science principles. Some of you took that first. And one of the things that was unusual about computer science principles is that when you create a variable, like let's say you have this variable called x in, uh, this is App Inventor I'm talking about now. And you could put stuff in, in this box called x, right? So here's this box. Uh, I'll move it down here. Uh, it's called, this is the variable, it's got x. And you could start off by putting, you know, your name in here. Uh, Bill, you put your name in there, it's like that. Later on, you come along and say, oh, no, I don't want to put Bill in there. I want to put the number three in the box. So you put three in the box. And it's the box is like, okay, now I contain three. Then later on, you're like, no, I don't like that. I'm going to put the value true in there. And the box just doesn't care. Now, you notice that I'm putting different data types in this box, right? I first started with a string. They put in an integer, and I put in a Boolean. And you notice that I'm using the same box to hold different types of data. And the reason why this is allowed is that App Inventor is a weakly typed language. Weakly typed. In other words, you make a box, it can hold anything. Now, App Inventor is not a real popular language, but there is an incredibly popular language out there that is also weakly typed. Can anyone tell me what it is? Mr. Franovic. It's Python. Python is a weekly type language. Now, people who write relatively small programs, they like weekly type languages because you could just create a box and keep putting in whatever you want. It's flexible. You use it for one thing later on in the program. You use it for another thing, etc. People who write really big programs, like if you're going to write programs with like thousands of lines in it or hundreds of thousands of lines in it, most of those people, most of them, do not like weakly typed languages. They want strongly typed languages. So basically what that means is when you create the box, you tell it like that. You say integer x. And then for the entire life of that variable, you can only put integers in the box. Why do people want that? Why are they specifically, explicitly restricting this box to only hold one type of thing? Seems weird. Would think you'd want a more flexible box. But if you're writing very big programs, it's better to do this. Yes, Ben? Prevents future errors. Like the box is intended for one purpose. Yeah. You won't accidentally put else Right. In. What you want to do here is you want to get the compiler to do some of the work for you. And if you accidentally put the wrong thing in the box, you want the compiler to tell you. It says, ah, ah, ah. You don't want to put that in that box. You, that's an integer box. If you're putting a string in that box, you're making a mistake. Now, I'm going to ask you to think back to something else we learned in CSA. So let's say I create uh, a, an array of dogs here. Now, here I've created an array of 10 pointers. And then later on, I can go something like this. I can go pack sub 0 equals new dog. And then I can put in the information for the dog like that. Okay. So basically, what I'm doing here is I'm creating an, uh, uh, an array of 10 dog pointers. And I'm creating a dog, and I'm assigning it to the first element here. Question, when I do this, if, uh, if I have that famous inheritance hierarchy that we worked with all of last year, where I have a dog here, and then I have a poodle over here, and then maybe I have some other kind of dog, like a uh, beagle over here, like that, right? Uh, could I put poodles and beagles in here? Could I do this? So could I go pack uh, one equals new beagle? Am I allowed to do that or no? Mr. F, sorry, do you remember, sir? Uh, no. no, you don't remember or no, it's not allowed? No, it's not allowed. It is allowed. In fact, when we, try, when we start putting different kinds of dogs into the same array, that array has a name. What kind of array is it? Yes, miss? Uh, it is polymorphism, but the, the array itself has a name. It's a type of array. Do you remember, Mr. Scholson? It's the opposite. It's a heterogeneous array. So it's heterogeneous because this array holds different types of dogs. And hetero means different. Homogeneous means same. 
Okay, so here we spent a week discussing heterogeneous arrays, and this is what we have here. We have an array that holds different types of dogs. So here's my question for you, and this is what I want you to discuss with your partner for a few minutes. What if instead of going dog here, right, I just go object? Now once I do this, I can put anything in this array. Dogs, cats, birds, buildings, cameras, computers. Once I put object here, I can put anything over here. Now I would put object over here, of course. Right? Because we already decided last year that every single thing in Java inherits from object, right? Every, all classes inherit from object. Remember that, right? So by putting object here, I could make this array that could hold anything. And I could do this, by the way, and this would compile down the road. But my question is, is this a good or bad idea and why? I'd like you to just take a minute and discuss with your partner why this may be a good or a bad idea. Okay, let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. Uh, who have I not spoken to? Miss uh, Teleska, do you think this is a good idea or a bad idea, this, this object array here? It is a bad idea. Tell me why you think it's a bad idea. That's exactly right. If it's so flexible that you could put anything in here, you're losing the value of the type checked uh, uh, advantages of, of having a strongly typed language. You're turning Java into Python. And if you wanted Python, you should have just used Python. But here, because Java is a strongly typed language, you're undoing the type checking. So generally speaking, when we build large pro programs, we want to build our code so that it's more type checked, not less type checked. We want to write the code so that there's more type checking done by the compiler, not less. So let's go back now and look at the code with Mr. Sarkar had written for the days of the week and see if we're headed in the right direction or not. 